Alright guys, so today we're going to talk about blackbird algae and uh, some of the causes, treatments, and some general information about it. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on this topic lately because I've been getting some in this tank. And uh, I'll talk about why I think I'm getting it. Uh, but first we'll talk about the general cause. It almost always leads back to uh, CO2 levels. So you either have low CO2 or uh, fluctuating CO2 levels. So like higher CO2 at the beginning of the day. And then as the lights are on and the plants are using the CO2, uh, you'll have lower CO2 at the end of the day. That's usually the case with non-CO2 uh, setups like this. Um, so that can become a problem. Uh, even with DIY CO2, uh, I don't recommend the yeast, uh, using like the yeast and all that uh, with the DIY CO2 just because it's really hard to be consistent with. Um, I've seen a lot of people be successful with it, uh, but I think I... It just brings along uh, more problems and it's sort of a hassle compared to um, using pressurized CO2 which I do recommend if you're thinking about um, injecting CO2 into your tank. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing this uh, for this tank because at the moment I have a little bit of an imbalance that I'm sensing. Um, right now I think I have too much light which is why I'm trying to uh, uh, cover up the tank with this uh, floating plants, the Amazon frog bit, and duckweed. Uh, and I think that's helping a little bit. But as I said before, the plant load, there's just so many plants that the need for CO2 is so great. And with the light, uh, light is always the controlling factor. So if you have a lot of light, you're going to require, the plants are, are going to require a lot more nutrients and CO2 to use up that light. And uh, right now, I, th I know I'm providing enough nutrients. Uh, because I have the dirt and I'm dosing the estimated index method uh, which is all about just maxing out all the nutrient levels so your plants have uh, the chance to uh, have the optimum optimum growth and uh, have access to all those nutrients when they need it so I've been doing that and I know I have enough light but there's one more factor that's the CO2 and it's uh, something I haven't really experimented with much I, ha I don't dose any Seachem Excel which is like liquid carbon and uh, just because I don't I don't think it actually uh, works as well as uh, some people believe um, I do believe the pressurized CO2 is the best way to go so I think I'm gonna go that route pretty soon here um, I'll be making a playlist with all those videos related to CO2 uh, as I get the equipment and set it up in this tank um, but that's one way to um, uh, hopefully solve your problem with this algae. Uh, manual removal is a pretty simple way of just getting rid of uh, what you have in your tank because even if you start dosing the CO2 uh, the blackbird algae probably isn't going to die it's just going to not uh, have any you're not going to see any new growth on the leaves uh, so you're going to have to just manually remove it or uh, I know a lot of people treat with uh, hydrogen peroxide they spot treat um, or they use bleach, they dip in bleach, uh, Seachem Excel, you can spot treat using that as well. Um, that can be sort of risky if you overdose some of that, um, and it, especially with the fish and if you have shrimp or snails and that sort of thing. So I haven't uh, really been wanting to try with anything like that. Uh, I haven't, you can look up more specifics on how to do that if you're interested. Um, but, uh, also another way for treating it, uh, Siamese algae eaters do a good job. Uh, I have heard some a mono shrimp, some people have a mono shrimp that will eat it. Others say they won't, so it's uh, sort of questionable on that. But all those things are not going to solve your actual problem with, with the CO2. They're just going to kind of cover up uh, the existing problem that you have. So one way to solve it, I, like I said, the C, adding the CO2 to your tank. Also, um, reducing your lighting with the floating plants or raising up your light uh, if, you, if you're able to do that. Um, also, just keeping your lights on for less time during the day. Uh, so, decreasing the photo period. Uh, that will help. Uh, sometimes doing like a blackout for a couple days, like three days, um, will uh, kill off the algae. 
uh, but it's just going to come back again if you don't actually solve the problem with the CO2. And uh, I really um, believe that's a problem in this tank. I also believe that uh, too many organics in the water uh, can cause this algae to form. Uh, so I think I've had uh, a lot of dirt coming up from the substrate because I've been moving a lot of plants around. And uh, they, that dirt gets stuck in the filter and it just kind of sits there. So I did a big clean out of the filter and a big water change yesterday. And I think that's going to help a little bit as well. Um, so that's what I have uh, learned about blackbird algae. All related to CO2. Um, there's a lot of treatments for it. Uh, but you got to get at the root problem if you want to solve uh, any outbreak that you have in your tank. So uh, that's all the, inf all the information I have for you today. If you have any questions or if you need a suggestion on what to do on your own tank, uh, please leave that in the comments below. And uh, be on the lookout for more videos on CO2 in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.